Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Dulo Show. This one we're going to do a bit different. We're going to do a Q&A format. We got some questions and we're going to answer them for you. Thanks for submitting those. Thanks to everyone who took part in uh, this little experiment. I'm going to start with the first question. Fancy, by the way. Check this out. How did the idea about designing and manufacturing your own product come up? I think you should take that one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I actually have a very good recollection on that. The idea for Dulu uh, happened on the 1st of September 2016 while I was at an early morning networking event in Better House in uh, Sofia. Shout out to Better House. Uh, I was at a, an event that is called Better Breakfast that happens every Thursday there. Uh, and usually they have a speaker who is uh, talking about their business or about a topic that's important to, for uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, and in this case, they had uh, a boy and a girl who were doing a business, I think, uh, re related to printing on fabrics, actually. T-shirt business. Yeah, it's more like t-shirts and shirts, but I think they were mostly finding uh, patterns online from artists and printing them on high quality fabrics. And while I was sitting there uh, and I was enjoying the talk, um, S suddenly an idea came in my head hey in Bulgaria you have uh, uh, you have a lot of uh, experience and knowledge about uh, doing clothing uh, uh, we know that from uh, before and from relatives or friends who are involved in those industries um, and uh, we knew that uh, potentially there could be quite a lot of interest in people in uh, using performance fabrics uh, in manufacturing clothes uh, that would provide less hustle but would look just as good as traditional clothing. So kind of the two things combined, hey why don't we try to see if we can combine this idea that we know from the Western world basically, from Western Europe and from the US, uh, and try to execute it in Bulgaria making use of the resources there, thinking at the same time that it probably will be less expensive and at the same time the very good quality. And that's how the idea came to be. And it was just something that was like that at this spot. I wrote it down and I think I didn't really entertain it for as a much long time. And then a couple of hours later or a day later, I shared it with you. And from then on, we actually started thinking about whether there's, this is a valuable, viable idea. Yeah, and I, I remember hearing about those type of, uh, of shirts being made in the US. And it was kind of a product that I was uh, looking forward to getting myself, but it's, of course, it wasn't available in Europe, so we had to order them from the US. Uh, and then once Marin shared that with me, it all made sense that we go, we can leverage the benefits of um, being from Bulgaria. And we can use the traditions and quality and the good pricing and make those shirts ourselves. So it's basically scratching our own itch, which was the, the main motivation be for starting it and then yes. it was it was really nice because we were anticipating each batch so I was looking forward to every new batch especially the first one because it, it's actually a product that we were looking forward to wearing uh, and I think it helps in the whole process making a product for yourself because we can wear it we can test it we know what we want we know what we want to improve for ourselves and it's um, it's kind of how we go about uh, getting a target group yeah. which is basically targeting ourselves and if you want a more detailed explanation about the birth of the idea, there is actually a post I wrote on Medium. It's on our publication, The Needle. So if you go to medium.com slash the dash needle, uh, it's one of the first posts that uh, we were published together. Uh, it's called Birth of an Idea. Um, and it basically documents the first one or three days uh, of this idea generating and evolving. Yeah. Okay, question number two. Who do you guys share responsibility? How do you guys share responsibilities and who is responsible for what? Okay, I can take that one. Uh, I think we both of us do everything. So we, when we started, we taught ourselves to, uh, to be able to do everything. So it's, um, it's whether it's recording audio, whether it's editing vlogs, filming vlogs. Um, I think that's uh, that was a good thing that we did because then we're kind of independent So if, if I'm in Bulgaria and I need to document something that's happening over there I can just do it on the spot without having to have sent files over and then you have to do them um, So we both can do everything that we need to do at this point 
but I think um, the kind of naturally Murin has been editing and making, I mean editing mostly, about let's say 80% of the vlogs. And then I've been writing about 80% of the blogs. Um, so he's been taking more, more of the video part, I've been taking more of the writing part. Um, the podcasts, um, how we do them is basically whichever one of us books the guest. Uh, we follow the whole process before the podcast, during the podcast and after that with the, with the person that we've booked uh, ourselves. So depending on which one made the, made the connection with, with the guest. Uh, which basically involves recording the podcast and then editing all the files and sending the files to our guest and posting the files and the copy um, and that's the podcast and then the audio experience we both of us we do it I read them because I wrote them most of them I, the ones that you wrote you're gonna read uh, and then I'll be recording those and I think that's uh, yeah well there's also other thing uh, communication with our partner regarding oh, yeah. production of the product itself uh, we have a third person who is involved in the production and the whole manufacturing and sourcing processes uh, and we're communicating uh, with them, both of us. We have a shared group on WhatsApp and that's been very, very helpful. In the early stages it was uh, only over email but we found WhatsApp more efficient and more direct way of communicating. And uh, So it keeps the three of yeah, us in the loop. keeps the three of us in the loop. And I think the way we shared or like spread out responsibilities is really, as you mentioned, very naturally. I enjoy more the process of uh, editing or shooting videos. I'm not a big fan of writing. I actually prefer to record myself either speaking or, uh, or uh, on a video on the phone, uh, sharing and having an idea and just saying it, saying it out loud than writing it. Uh, it sounds much nicer when you write it, of course, but uh, it's just the way my mind works. Uh, and yeah, I think that about covers it. Goes, We've been sharing basically pretty much the workload and that's been very very important very helpful. It's going to be interesting when more people start to yeah, get engaged I mean, eventually. And more stuff to be done. Yeah. <laughs> Question number three. What's up? A lot. <laughs> Do you plan to produce other female clothing items besides shirts? So skirts, dresses, etc. And if so, will they, will they be couture inspired in any way? So do we plan to produce any other shirt items for women, in, uh, not only shirts? I think the next product we have in mind is, uh, is, a, is pants, a pants. Uh, and I guess we're going to do them both for female and male, for women and men. We have to explore a lot about um, that. <laughs> but I think it's something that it's a um, few months in advance. So we, I don't think, I mean, that's probably the next item that we're going to do, but it's just that we have a lot to do now, so we, we're not really thinking about that because uh, we need to focus on making the best shirt we can at this point uh, but of course i think we have a vision for for more products um, more variety but most probably pants are going to be the next item but we're not really thinking about that at the moment yeah. given that we're focused on making the shirt and for the second part if they will be couture inspired in any way sure we're going with a lot of inspiration from uh, things we like we're following on our instagram channel a lot of other brands that we feel are doing a great job in communicating their designs uh, we go for the cleaner designs always but actually the more we're involved in this i notice that we're getting more and more independently thinking and having ideas about how to develop a product and design it and the partner on our manufacturing side is very skilled and always has great suggestions and very helpful in terms of guiding us in the right direction. And for women's fashion, I think it's something out of our comfort zone. So we need to get some outside help to design a women's collection. I think the shirts we can do because we're trying to go as, as, uh, as versatile as possible with the shirt. So it's basically it's universal. You can use it in an office environment or in a more formal one. But to make a proper women's collection, I think we need some outside help for that. It's interesting because a lot of other companies that we kind of operate in the similar space, they don't really focus a lot on women. So uh, yeah. that's a big advantage for us and something different that we're doing. Cool beans. Next one. Hey, I'm in love with my dual wear shirt. Thank you. Thanks yeah. to you. When do you plan to release new colors? I think that's a very timely question. Yeah. Do, who takes that one? Go ahead, I'll take share it. <laughs> we plan on introducing new colors when we introduce all colors. So basically <laughs> when we start selling, we plan on uh, introducing a few colors. I think we made a vlog about that, but then we 
changed one or two colors from those but we're basically gonna start with about five solid colors both for men and women yeah and those will be available when we start selling hopefully september and that wraps up our very special episode eight with q a i think it was nice if you want to ask us more questions drop them down in comments or send this send it directly to us either personally or on on uh, one of our channels i think it's a good moment to plug our website yeah kind of a new website yeah well it's the pre-launch phase it is a new website it's a new website you can see it on where wheredulo.com yeah go there and leave your email address and uh, we'll make sure that we get in touch with you once we are ready to open shop yeah, go and check it out thanks for all the questions keep them coming we'll probably do one of those q a's we plan on doing at least uh, q a's for the future as well yeah thanks very much